had a Break. We're back. Hope all you guys got some potato chips. Got uh, something to drink. I'm in a foreign country. Thank y'all for all checking in. Like, like I said, we just part two podcast. People with podcasts. Spotify. Uh, uh, we're back on here. Let me see. Boom. Let me try adding them. Give me a sec. Hold up. Wait. Hope y'all having a beautiful night. Thank you for tuning in. Where you at? Where you at, man? Hold up. Hold up. I don't know why I told Had a little bit left anyway. Join. Hold up. I got you. I got you. Where you at? All right. How do I add him? Here we go. Come back. Part. To show people's and the people's podcast episode number 11 with Kevin Rhodes. We're back, tuning in, checking it out. I'm got my hydration break, got my pee break. <laughs> Just waiting for Kevin to come back in here. I think I invited him, but I don't. Where I'm here, there bro. There he is. Okay. You might have to hear me. I hear you, bro. I don't see you, but that's how it happened oh. last time, and then you just popped back up. That's right. That's right. So where you at? Where you at? Turn on that camera. All right, I'm falling. It's all goody. I'm not there yet. Nope, nope. I'm going to turn my camera off. And not yet. Off. I did that last time, and it seemed to work. Let's see. There it is. Ba boom. Turn it off, turn it off. Cool. That looks good. Um uh, it works, man. That works. Magic. <laughs> so where are we at? I don't know, bro. It's it's break. I can't hear it. Dude. Stop setting that. Hold on just a second. You can't hear me? I can yeah. hear you, but it's going gang, 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 like that. <laughs> Yeah, it cuts in and out sometimes, man. It's kind of whack like that. Oh, this isn't the best know. format, man. I definitely want to do another one of these live with you, bro. You know? Hey, when you come in and we do that uh, video, we'll, we'll do another podcast, man. Yeah, man. Let's let's get together. Let's get whatever music we can get rocking and then uh, do a video or videos. We'll, uh, we'll do a podcast where I don't drop stuff and uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get it popping, man, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you I don't think you you're probably not that far. Uh like I said, uh I got a trip coming up to Connecticut. Uh I will be coming sometime after Fourth of July because I want to spend that at home and do some right, Texas right. barbecue. And then I will be headed up and uh I have this thing going on with my family. So uh my mom's one of eight kids. And we have a big family, and uh, my grandparents uh, just passed a few years ago. But what I want to do is the first weekend in August was their uh, anniversary weekend. And uh, I'd like to do something where my generation all gets together and does like a, a picnic or party or summer thing. Because be cool. um, usually it's my mom's generation. You right, know? right. So I want to keep something alive. Plus, they always wanted to go to Hawaii 
and uh, they never made it. So I was thinking of making like a luau theme and yeah, do all cool. that. So I just started telling a couple of my cousins and get it organized. So I got to be up there for the first Saturday in August. So I will either hit you up on the way up or on the way back, but we'll definitely get it popping once I get my dates. Oh locked. yeah. Yeah. Once you get it all locked in, let me know. I'll, uh, if I got like, I should have plenty of vacation time. So I can actually take off a few days while you're in and we can just have some time to do whatever, you know, beautiful. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I want to do some some videos, some music, some fun stuff, and then just kick it and relax, too, man. Just enjoy life together, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I got, got another another Kentucky boy in here. Do it. Mr. JT, my cuz. What up, cuz? Oh. <laughs> what up, cuz? It's good, man. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, how, How's uh 2022 going for you so far, other than the cold-ass winter <laughs> weather, which sucks, man? Anything, anything new in life with uh, family, work, kids, just life in general? Not, not a whole lot, man. Just, uh, just working and enjoying the time I have with the fam. Although I will say one new thing that is that is being worked on outside of the music. Um, me and a buddy of mine are kind of working mm -hmm. on our own version of a Dungeons and Dragons style game. I like, I like, you know, you know me. I like acting and all that type of stuff. So I'm super into all that. And uh, mm -hmm. we're doing sort of a okay. space space type version of uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but without all the math. I'm trying to create it where I can just roll for roll, no pluses and minuses, and edit all that. Um, then I, you got me over here looking at a book, going, "Uh, uh you can do this and that." And no, I don't want to do all that. I just want to have a fucking epic adventure with some Keep friends. Keep it simple, bro. fun. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. That's working cool. Up that. The wife sure. and the wife and the child are going to play too. Nice. Okay. Cool. So, how did you meet your wife, bro? That's uh. So, way back in the day, me asking. when we were um, when I was still in a band with uh, Far From Falling, um, we used to play up in Evansville. Okay. Evansville's like thirty, forty-five minutes away from where we're at, and there's a lot more places to play up there. So we would go up there and play all the time. So we ended up playing with um, a friend band. I'm trying to think of what the hell they were called at the time. They changed their names a couple times. Anthem for a Massacre. That's a fucking mm. metal-ass name, isn't it? <laughs> that's a cool-ass <laughs> I'm assuming that's a metal yeah, band. Yeah. That's got to be a metal yeah, band. We, so, so we that's teamed dope. up, and we played, like, a lot of shows together. Well, one night, um, the lead singer kind of asked her and her boyfriend at the time. They all worked together, and they were like, hey, my band's playing a show. And she wasn't even going to go, but she ended up going anyway. So we ended up meeting like that. I had a girlfriend at the time. She had a dude at the time. And then, uh, but we became good friends and we all hung out and everything. And then like, uh, they moved to Texas and then imagine that. And, um, and we went on and played and whatever else. So like, moves to Texas, right. So like four years later, she's cleaning her apartment and she finds one of our albums. Um, you know, our, our, the last album we had released in there. And she was like, Oh, she was, Good friends with me and also good friends with Brian, my, my best friend that was uh, the guitar player for the band. So she kind of hit both of us up and was seeing how we'd been and whatnot. So I had always liked her back then, and she had actually always liked me too, but we never really talked about it because we were both, you know, with people at the time. And uh, so we just started, yeah. uh, just started talking and started talking through Yahoo Messenger, bro, <laughs> of, all, of all things. I. <laughs> Y'all known each other for a while. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, shit. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just that's uh, back when they, that's back when they had aim and shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. So anyway, she ended up hitting me up, and we kind of hit it off, and started hanging out as friends, and then it just went on from there. And so now, uh, as of January twentieth, we just hit uh, ten years together, bro. Oh wow! Okay, awesome. Super awesome. Ten now and then it's wild how like things three, happen three, like that, right? I know. Like she wasn't weird. supposed to be at that show. Yeah. Yeah, like she wasn't even gonna go. They were yeah, like, oh, we're gonna a, go. like that. the last minute they decided to go. We would have never met. It's crazy. Yeah. And you guys lived like, you know, in close proximity your whole life, you know what I mean? It had like similar interests and stuff. It, it's weird how it, it just takes that moment, you know? Now I always wonder about those things too, like which ones 
Okay. So I was going to say, actually, uh, we did meet whenever she was living in Indiana, but she didn't move to Indiana until she was like seven, between 17 and 19. I don't remember how old she was, but she actually grew up in New York around your neck of the woods. She was uh, from um, Troy area. Okay. Oh, okay. So upstate New York. Yeah, yeah, they got you. Okay, right. cool. Yep. So that's where and her that's where her uh, mom and dad are both from. Her dad her dad's actually hanging out with us uh, right now. He's here. He's got super New York accent still. But hers hers is only strong when she says like coffee and water and stuff like that. <laughs> then you can hear it. <laughs> uh, it's so funny to hear in that like New York accent or uh, East Coast accent because like to me. It's just that, normal talk, right, you know, right. right? I don't really hear that. Or even even L.A., like Cali or, or something, like Cali accent. I mean, there's certain words, especially if you're in the Bay, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? They're different, but I don't really hear it. But for us, it's always South now, which I live down South now. So I'm curious, like, am I going to pick that up and have, like, a, a weird, you know, hybrid <laughs> accent? Right. You know, I got 40 years of up coast, East Coast accent, yeah. you know, to, to get rid of. So we'll Hey, spe speaking of that, I actually talked to That's you. like when I meet people work. traveling and – uh they have like weird accents and I'm like, where the hell are you from? And they'd be like, well, I lived in a stint in <laughs> London and China, like they, so many different places and their, their accents just crazy, you know? Like, yeah. It's kind of cool. That's how this lady was. I talked to this lady at work one time and she was from England, but she had been living down South, like Georgia or something. So she'd have like a British accent on a couple words. And then she'd say like, right. Like, <laughs> like she had this Southern accent would come out. Y'all. I was like, Oh, you're like a, you're like a, southern uh londoner that's weird yeah it was really really interesting yeah yeah that's, that's cool man yeah. there's something about that like proper london uk accent too man yeah. like uh you know all the infomercials and things that we see as smart or as intelligent are always spoken that way you know yeah, like yeah. uh there's something cool about it in general like uh, they definitely have a cool speech but you know their words are like like sometimes like, like i know them by context you know but sometimes yeah. i'm like are they talking about you know? yeah right right yeah burnsy will get to talking fast sometimes Different. and i'll have to i'll have to go back and play his audio messages and I'll be like the fuck did he say <laughs> i was pretty good on, i was pretty good on most of it then we yeah. started getting you know a couple beers in and uh <laughs> the, the accent picked up and i was like yeah bro <laughs> bro <laughs> the, the cockney starts coming out a little bro. bit and actually, it's funny because sometimes I'll mix them up a little. Like, I definitely know, like, UK versus Australia, but not quite on the first word sometimes, you know? Like, oh, I'm yeah. like, mm, okay, I'm waiting for that. Depends on how yeah. strong they're actually. Or, like, my friend from South Africa. Yeah. My friend from South Africa, that sounds like either Australian or more more England, actually. And ironically, he lives in UK now. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was like, bro, you you know, they probably noticed this different, but, like, most people with that – blends right in yeah you know, like it's, it's similar to me yeah a lot of south african accents have uh almost a uh new zealand kind of sound to them sometimes yep mm -hmm. and that new zealand australian is a bit different right. um i heard someone say this and i think it's accurate uh i had to think about it i think it's really cool though they said that australian are just the texans of the eu <laughs> i could see that i could definitely because they're like loud and proud and some drinking motherfuckers right. and like they're cool man don't get me wrong i party with some australian people but they're they're their own flavor like you don't confuse them with anyone else yeah so, for sure um they're, they're always a good time i've never hung around with them i never met like a boring australian person <laughs> you know like i'm sure there's libraries in australia and there's some like boring people working there but right not the ones i met no know? no yeah anna anna is probably the most like chilled and like laid back Australian that I've ever met. Well, she's a, she's one of the only Australians I've ever met in person. But you know, Jods has like a pretty big personality. Did you, mm -hmm. did you know Jods? I I've heard the name uh, once or twice, yeah. but no, honestly, I I don't think so. I feel like he might have came over to sing and did something yeah. quickly, but wasn't really on it. Maybe he's more of an auto rap dude, probably right. Yeah, he was an auto. He was definitely in the auto rap days. He was a Foreign X member too. First, when we when we first started Foreign X, it was like cool. 10 or 11 dudes and then it got narrowed down to about five by the end it was just me gallagher Changman, monty chu the lone wolf and uh that's one guy by the way <laughs> and then uh chowder limits I, I was just gonna clarify that for everyone yeah. i'm pretty sure that's one, that's one dude because he goes by all those names yeah yeah, yeah. chang man yeah. monty chu the lone wolf that's him it's cool oh yeah yeah i still talk to monty every once in a while too. yeah so so why why 
So here's a question. Here's the obvious question, right? Like, uh, why the name 4NX? And there obviously wasn't four members, so we know that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, why was it 4NX? So 4NX was shorthand. So we had people in South Africa, Australia, scattered throughout the U.S. We had some people in the U.K. So the actual name of the group was Foreign Exchange. And then there was another group out there called Got Foreign it. Exchange. So we shortened it to just foreign X. We're just like, all right, we'll just, we'll know that that's what that means. If somebody asks us, we can tell them, but we wanted to have a separation from whoever that, you know, that other group that was out there. So of course it never really took off, but at the time, <laughs> but yeah, so that's the story of foreign X or what the name means. Gotcha. Okay. That's cool. By the way, there is another Kevin Rhodes on YouTube at least. Yep. I mean, not that it would be a very uncommon name. Right. I mean, my name is Dan Goodman, so there's a million of us. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I noticed because I was I was searching through, and it was like uh, I don't remember what the hell he's he's not a singer. Uh, he was doing like I saw something pop up. They were feeding snakes, and it was featuring him on a video. I, I don't. There know. is another musician. Yeah. So if you Google it too, that's on that that was on Spotify. Yeah. Um, because like if you've done distribution through Amuse, I don't know how CD Baby does it, but they give you like a unless you've gone out and claimed your, your YouTube or whatever, and they put it on your YouTube, you yep. know, it goes on like that channel or that, uh, whatever they call it. So we were both on like the same thing. And I was like, what the hell? Um, but then there's also another Kevin Rose mm -hmm. out there who is, um, who is decently famous and he's like a, um, a symphony composer. That's dope. So I might have to hook up with him and be like, let's just let's, let's talk about Kevin Rhodes's work together. Let's put out some crazy symphony. You know, that's the thing too. I think sometimes people, that's actually your name, but I know sometimes people choose their name. I mean, very commonly in rap with someone famous like 50 Cent. That was a famous street gangster. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, so people do that. They'll, they'll, they'll do like God, Yo Gotti, you know, like obviously it's John right, Gotti right. and stuff. Because when people Google or something, like the name gets out there. It's just catchy, I, I guess. It's tricky because like you could become big, like, uh, Rick Ross, the real Rick Ross, like, you know, drug dealer. And then like they become, you know, the Rick Ross, the rapper, right. you know? So like, it's interesting how a lot of times people just use someone they idolize, usually some like super villain. You know, yeah, right. You think about it, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Nobody wants, nobody Rappers, wants to be the good, I mean? guy, good guy in hip hop. <laughs> nobody wants to be the good guy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just the vibe. I feel like there are a few. Mm -hmm. Not many, though. But, like, you know who's weird like that? I was watching with my homie uh, from D.C. who's actually out here right now who I met in Barcelona. So that's a wow crazy travel connection. And, uh, you know, he's a black dude. Not that it matters. But he randomly was like, hey, check this out. And he, he throws out Little Dicky on a freestyle. I'm like, yo, you watching Little Dicky, bro? That's what it is. Because Little Dicky's kind of like a good guy rapper. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, he's not a fucking super villain at all. I actually... I'm not a huge fan, but I love what he's about. I, yeah. I do like his style, and he's got talent, and I like how he's so wacky. Yeah, but yeah. I love the one where he has, like, save money and go buy shit at, like, fucking thrift yeah. stores. He had that video, and he literally was doing that. He walked into, like, real rappers' videos. Like, I'm just making this up, but, like, Lil Wayne, they're shooting, like, a million-dollar video. And he's like, can I shoot my video inside your video to save money? And he's, like, shooting himself <laughs> doing the video of his song inside of a rapper's <laughs> other video. I mean, the dude is a wacky dude, but in a cool way. Have you ever seen him? Show. And he's got a show on <laughs> Netflix called uh, Dave. Dave. So yeah, crazy. with the art bark and shit in the cover. That so crazy. Such a weird dude, he's man. Weird. His freestyle, though. On, it's pretty funny, though. On on um, Sway, though, it was sick. I think he's done two on there now. That's what, we're, that's what we were watching. Yeah, yeah it, it, he goes heavy, man. Hey, if you so ever... I was putting him on to some uh, like old G-Unit freestyles and some yeah, craziness. Yeah. And then we started playing some of my videos, and he's like, I know you made music, but he's like, you got a song with TNA? And he starts, like, going through and, like, seeing this and that. And he's like, yo, this shit is hot. Oh, yeah. And I put on some other songs with MCRE. Everyone loves MCRE, man. It's yeah. funny because I'll be like, yeah, I have a song with, like, Joel Ortiz and DNA. And, and like, people who are super into hip-hop will be like, cool, you know. But a lot of people are like, yeah, that's cool. And then they'll see MCRE, like, yo, that's my favorite dude you rhyme with. Yeah. You know? I'm like, yeah, that, that dude's nice, man. Yeah, yeah, I like that Connecticut MCRE connection. A lot. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 a lot of things. I mean, but the truth is, it's like who he is as a person shines through. He's also awesome oh, yeah. person, not just an awesome MC, and he's got the whole dad vibe. And he like he's really really good on topic. I mean, not only just like rhyme and pace and everything else, but like his words 
there's no wasted words. There's no yeah, bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you ever heard the one he did with the uh, with the Kobe, the the Kobe thing after Kobe passed. I don't think I did a track and he put that verse on. I'm like, damn, man. It almost made me cry, man. I got a video for that one. It's a good one. I'll have to, look, I'll have to pull it up. Yeah, that one's crazy. That's the one. Uh, Castro's on, Castro's on that one too. Oh yeah. No oh, shit. I haven't. I haven't talked to Castro. Yeah, it's called for the AC world. Chill in years, bro. I need to hit that dude up too. Yeah, man. I actually, I got I got up with him um, in Jersey. Shout out to Cash. I think I saw him in this one or the other one real quick. And uh, it was a random night, man, because uh, I was just chilling. I don't really, I don't really drink much. Once in a while, on occasion, but he wanted me to have a beer, so he bought me a beer and uh, frog legs. Frog legs. First time I had frog legs, man. bro, was with fucking AC, 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 AC chill, chill. In, in randomly in Jersey, that's man. Fucking wild. I, like, see, yeah, that's, man. Kind of, that's funny. I, I wouldn't imagine people eating frog legs in Jersey, bro. That's something I imagine people doing on the bike. No, me neither, bro. Somewhere. It was just, <laughs> it made sense. I was flying into Jersey, and so I was like, hey, can we do somewhere close to the, like, you know, the airport? That's where I'm staying and shit. He came. He scooped me up, and we went into this little, like, random bar downtown, and then fucking where are some frog legs? I never had, had frog legs before. I've had gator and all yeah, that yeah. shit. It was banging. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it, it tastes mostly like chicken legs. Pretty much. A little slimier. You barely yeah. Tell honestly, if I didn't tell someone it was chicken, you know, if I told them it was chicken, they believe it. it, was, it was yeah, good. frog legs and alligator, but uh, are just more yeah, gamey. no, I mean, I, I, I got that gamey flavor to them, a little more gritty, a little bit. If you live in Florida or uh, Louisiana, I mean, or been to either, I mean, I felt like you had to have tried, you know, gator yeah. for sure. Yeah, I tried that's where I tried gator, it was down in Florida, we went somewhere and had it, it was pretty good. Me too. I had it fried, and then um, I got my wife onto it. She she was a very picky eater when I met her. She was like one of those people that like could go to two restaurants and have one dish on each yeah, restaurant yeah. that she would eat. That was like it, you know. And then I got her to try gator uh, for my birthday a couple years back. We were in Louisiana, and uh, you know it's fried. I'm like it's fried. I mean, like you know, I wouldn't you wouldn't want calamari raw either. Like right, once right. it's cooked that way, you're gonna like it, you know. So I ordered it, she tried it, and she's like, wow, it's really good. And then we went to this other place, and they did blackened. And I wasn't sure about that either. Yeah. I was like, mm, yeah. am I going to like it if it's not fried? So like, oh, they, well, they're like, well, we do half fried and half blackened. I'm like, let's go for it. I'll, yeah. I'll try anything. And the blackened was amazing. So, yeah, I, I like Gator a lot. I did it in Florida for the first time in my life, too, yeah. though. Same. So, yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was all right. I'd like to go and try some more, like, in, you know, I mean, we just went to, like, the first place we saw that, I'm like they probably got gator, <laughs> and we went there and ate it. But yeah, I'd like to try it out somewhere else too. Do it up. Yeah, I've eaten some interesting stuff. I've eaten like uh, deer, obviously venison and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. You know, I went to this one thing. It was like a like a like a hunter's cook off type oh, yeah? thing. So everything was like hunted. You know, bear and shit like that. I'm not I'm not into hunting. I'm not against it either. But like, I, I don't personally yeah. hunt. Um, but yeah, there was this thing. I don't even know how I got tickets to it. I think like, I don't know. Anyway, so, so somehow or another I went to it and it was, it was good though. It was like a lot of weird food. Some was a little too gamey for me, yeah. but I think everything was hunted was like the deal. It was like rattlesnake. There was all types of shit, you know? Yeah. I'm used to eating hunted stuff. My dad and, uh, his brothers, my grandpa, they're all big time hunters. I mean, dad still hunts, he hunts deer. And, um, as a matter of fact, Mr. JT, uh, his dad and my dad are like best buds, and that's who they hunt. They hunt together like all the time. Um, but yeah, so we eating, you know, eating deer growing up, quail, um, and you know, turkeys and all kinds of different things like that. But I don't know if you know this. I gotta, get, I gotta get a big freezer. Hell yeah! I don't know if you know this, but uh, speaking of food, Owensboro is like a big barbecue capital. We have the International Barbecue Festival here every year. It's starting to get bigger back to what it was back in the day. Like back in the day, like like over like 10,000 people would, would come to it. It was like the, it was second or third biggest festival, like food type festival around or whatever at that time. And then it kind of fell off for a while wow. from okay. our, you know, cities go through rough, rough patches and shit like that. But then they redid the riverfront. Is it a summer event by chance? Is it a summer event oh, yeah. by chance? Yep, yeah. big summer event. Usually, usually around Mother's Day. It's usually in May, so actually more of a spring event, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense because you guys are probably pretty hot in summer. Yeah. I was gonna say, shit, if it's a time anywhere near the time I was coming through, maybe I'll try to coordinate that. Oh, that yeah. would be cool. 
Well, you can always come through some other time. I love barbecue. It's, uh, it's great. Yeah, they do barbecue. They do barbecue chicken, all that type of stuff. But they also do like, you know, you know what mutton is? Are you familiar with mutton? I know the name, but I don't know what that is. It sounds something like very like down south. Yeah. So it's essentially it's like it's like pulled pork, but instead of pork, it's sheep. Okay, I'm in for that. It's pretty damn good. Definitely in for that. And then we also have I a like signature it. thing here that's like you know a, what? that's called burgoo, that's like um, that I think actually has mutton in it, and it has corn and other kind of other stuff. It's like a uh, what would you compare that to? I don't know. It's pretty unique, but it's it's good. My wife doesn't like it at all, <laughs> but I but I've had it my whole life and it's delicious. <laughs> it's all good. Gotta try it out. I love um uh, my my uh, wife's hometown in Mexico. They make this thing. Uh, it, it's different everywhere, but the, they have the traditional version and the best I've ever had of chicharrón. Yeah. What is that? So chicharrón. I thought it was uh like the ribs of of uh, of a uh, pork, mm -hmm. you know. But come to find out, it's actually the cheek. Really, chicharron. So it's it's the inside cheek of of a, a pig, and oh my god, it's fried. It's so, so that, delicious. It's like drugs. Isn't that what? Uh, oh my god, that, down in Mexico. Pork rinds, like this, if you look at a bag of pork rinds, doesn't it say chicharron on the bag? They say yeah, they say chicharron, and that's the thing. And I had it here in in Colombia, and it's like ribs and stuff. So there's different versions, mm -hmm. but. The, the real one, the cheap one, oh, my God. The first time we went there, they deal with kilos, right? So we got a kilo, which is like 2.2 .2 pounds, you know? And uh, they're like, here, it's for you. I'm like, I have a couple pieces. I'm like, eat two pounds of pork, you know what I mean? Like, then I started eating it, and it was like, I almost did eat the whole thing. I was like, oh, my God, it's so good. Maybe I will. It just comes like a brown paper bag sack, wow, you know? Wow. And it's very inexpensive. Oh, it's great, man. Yeah, I have to try that barbecue one of these days, man. Texas is hard to beat, man. I'll tell you, Austin specifically. Yeah. Oh, my God. I've had world-class barbecue. Like, I've gone to Kansas City, and no offense to any Kansas City people in the room here, <laughs> but honestly, you guys aren't as good as you think you are, all right? <laughs> You're not bad, but I went to, like, the top-ranked place, and me and my wife were both like, no way, Salt Lake barbecue all yeah. day, you know? Like, we'll definitely take the title on that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's actually one of the things when um I get back that I want to buy, like, right away is a smoker yeah. because I want to start getting into smoking meat. Nice. And I'll have to link up with you. I got to find some hunters because I would love to get some meat that's, like, hunted, yeah. you know, and smoke that. I want to do veggies a bit more, too. I want to grow, like, our own food and do veggies. Yeah. I want to kind of get out of, like, the whole big farm Me thing, too, you know? Bro. Me like too, bro. Me too. Yeah, I'd love to be able to do that. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, really. I mean, it's hard, though. I mean, it's not, you know – Unless you know a hunter, you know, and you can't even pay a hunter for food legally, which is pretty ridiculous. That's you know, crazy. I get they're not trying to just, that. you know. Yeah, you can't. So, like, you can barter or do whatever you want, but you're not allowed to give cash for hunting. Though you can charge someone to go hunting with you or whatever, but you cannot, like, charge them physically for an animal that's dead. Huh. I mean, that's crazy. That That's that. Go figure. I could see yeah. some conspiracy shit going on there. <laughs> It's a big farm. So. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I, I'd rather find something on the black market or Craigslist to someone who likes to hunt, but, but you know, doesn't have enough room for it. I can get a freezer and get, like, some real, you know, animal that lived in the wild, some real food other than, like, some crap, right. you know, that, like, is in a slaughterhouse. You're down there in Texas now, bro. Just hit up your buddy Joe Rogan, and you can get some elk and shit. You know, I've reached out to Joe a couple of times. He hasn't returned my messages, <laughs> but uh, we're normally pretty close. One of yeah, no, no. I mean, hey, Joe's amazing, right? He, get, he gives food to all of his friends, and he's huge yeah. on it. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know the right. dude, and I think a lot of people inbox him. Oh, so yeah. I didn't go that far to actually inbox him because I'm, I'm more realistic if he's not going to get back <laughs> yeah, to me, right. uh, especially considering he says he literally does not read comments or messages <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, yeah, I could stalk young – I could stalk young, young Jamie, yeah, but yeah. – I figure unless Netflix picks up our uh, documentary about traveling, like I, I'll probably never get on the JRE experience, you know? So that was all supposed to happen. And I guess the pandemic hit and kind of put a pause on that. Like, have you heard anything else since then? Of what? Well, as far as Netflix picking up the show and all that. Because I, when I talked to you before, I thought you were kind of. Oh, for us? Yeah, I thought you had kind of said like it was sort of like that looked like that was going to happen. Is it still just in the works or? No, man. I haven't reached out to anyone on that. Like it, 
all we're doing now is just gathering footage. Oh, okay. And then we're going to have to edit it, which will probably take a, a year sure. or more. You know what I mean? we got a lot of footage. I mean, we've been traveling since March of 2020. Uh, we, we broke our 55 destinations goal. And uh, we just, you know, kind of are done with it, actually. So I'm, I'm in Colombia for another day. Uh, my wife had to go home and do some work and all that. I have a week in South Beach, which, you know, that's not – I'm not filming yeah. that. And uh, we just booked uh, – I got two months left in Europe, but we just talked about it. We're not really going to post on, on, on Instagram and stuff that often anymore. Uh, maybe we'll make one or two posts of a couple pictures on Facebook. But we're going to keep the last part of it just for the video. Yeah. And, uh, we got to edit it down. I got to work with a couple video editors. We got to put like, uh, monologues and talking in it. We got to put music oh, in it. Sure, I mean, yeah. We did some of these YouTube videos and like a 10 minute video could take like 50 hours. So, you know, like wow. I, I can't imagine what the movie's going to take, but, uh, we're trying to get it to Netflix or Amazon or, or somebody at the end. But the truth of it is, if not, we'll put it up on YouTube or whatever, yeah. maybe put a little donation box or something it's going to come out eventually we're very excited about the travels i mean we've been traveling during this whole pandemic starting in march 2020 so we've seen everywhere and every perspective on it and yeah. gone through a lot bet, so uh man. you know Ranza, my wife she, she she got covid you know at one point while we were on the pause for travels wow. actually coming up on the anniversary yeah. it was super bowl oh, last year <laughs> there you go I remember because I bought all the food and she couldn't eat oh, it. Oh, no. Cause she she couldn't taste she it. Couldn't taste, really. My, my wife yeah. is still getting her taste back. She didn't get – she got she got it very mild. She didn't get sick at all. Yeah. But no taste and no smell on Super Bowl week is not fun. No, bro. That's terrible. It hit when – I, when I got hit with yeah. it, um, which was right after Thanksgiving, me and the wife and the kid all got it and didn't affect – uh, the little one hardly at all, but <clears throat> the wife got like kind of a bad cold, lost the taste, lost the smell. Me, I had no cold at all. All it did was affect my lungs, bro. I felt like a fat dude about my mm. size was sitting on my chest all the time and just terribly exhausted. And and my breath still isn't all the way back, dude. Like I'll have to every once in a while I'll have to be like, <gasps> I feel like I can't get my breath. So hopefully that that comes back 100 percent at some point. But I don't know. I don't know if it will or not. But it's still, I mean, it's, it's not like a problem, but every, but every once in a while it'll get me. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's crazy, though, because you, you do have to worry about, like, certain things. Like, you know, probably, you know, not trying to run a full sprint marathon and stuff. Right. But, like, you know, when you're doing things that need bigger lung capacity, even swimming yeah. and whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it, it sucks to know that your lungs aren't all the way there. Even singing and hitting notes and I, stuff, I'm sure there's times you're like, oh, I've, man, thought, you know, I've like, thought of that, bro. It hasn't, it hasn't affected me because I haven't been recording vocals yet. Like, cause all, cause all my stuff is pretty much done mm -hmm. as far as that. And I'm just like waiting to release stuff at this point. But yeah, I, that is something that, that, uh, was worrisome. And I was freaked out when I had it cause it, cause it, it didn't do me like a cold. It did me like, you know, with my lungs, I'm like, you know, I'm visions of myself on a ventilator and dying before I hit 40 and shit. And then yeah. I don't know if I told you this or maybe I did, but like three days after we get hit with COVID and all that stuff, a dude hit our freaking house with his truck. Did I tell you that? No. Like three thirty in the morning, I'm laying in my in my bed, and I hear boom. I mean, it sounded like an explosion went off, and then it just kept going because what happened is a dude ran into our HVAC, which is literally five feet away from my window. So like five six feet to the left, he would have came through my bedroom window, and who knows. You did, you did tell me, you didn't give me all the details, but you had told me that's why we didn't link up or whatever, because you were fixing your AC yeah. unit. Uh, and I, I didn't remember what was wrong with it, but now, <laughs> now I know, or maybe I just didn't touch yeah, that. Bro. But that dude was trying to jet crazy. when I came out, he was, he was wedged. He had got a big old school suburban that has some big forks on the front bumper. And it was like wedged up under a metal piece of the AC. And he's like, Wah! trying to back away. And I'm like, bro, you're going to, rip my house apart if you try to move like what are you doing anyway insurance there's only two things i can think of on that most likely drinking or drugs or he just randomly fell asleep at that time but usually drinking your drugs when it's that late yeah bro house. yeah I, I i'm pretty sure it was uh they the cops couldn't really get him to show anything in the sobriety test 
like the field test, but they were pretty sure he was on like pills mm -hmm. or something like that. He didn't smell like alcohol at all, but yeah, he just slammed into it, bro. I had, I had like PTSD for like a couple of weeks, like couldn't sleep. Like cars would drive by and I'd be like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, it was freaky, but all good now. That, that brings me back to the thing like about nice. That brings me back to the thing about your wife and how you met her. It's those like little freak moments, right? Because that's a scary moment. That's why it got in your head. But the truth of it is, it could have went way oh, worse. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like fixing your AC, you know what I mean? Everyone's healthy. No one yeah. got hurt. You know, I've seen a couple of those too. Because um, one time when I was in Connecticut at my house, this guy um, was like fixing uh, brakes across the street illegally. <laughs> and uh, he, the guy, he did his brakes. But I think he forgot to bleed the brakes or something, Shit. you know? So the guy went and backed up, and he went to stop, but he couldn't, and he went through my uh, oh, fence man. in my yard in the front, you know? Same thing. He was trying to pull away, and then, like, I called him, and I was like, dude, where are you going? Like, I know my neighbor. Like, I'm going to ask him who the hell <laughs> did this, and he's going to give me your name. So, like, where are you going, you know? But, uh, yeah, same thing. No big deal. He just had to fix the fence. And, actually, we had a guy who did it, like, on nice. the side, so it wasn't too expensive. But – I've seen some crazy stuff. I had two stories. I don't know if you caught this one on the one, the Bernsey podcast, but I used to rent my car on the service called Turo and uh, some girls like, Hey, I'm sorry. I got an accident, yada, yada. And I ended up like, what? So I like Google searched it and she did the same type of thing. She was going down a hill and she had to take a quick turn and she ran this through a oh. house, like, and pinned the dude who was sleeping under the oh, car. Crap. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. By Yale. Oh, the college God. so i'm like dude i'm like i'm looking up like how much does toro cover me because you're running over a yale student yeah. Yeah, you know right. like this guy could be worth millions of dollars in the future like you know what i mean what's his lawsuit gonna be for oh, you know perfect. like burning them under the bed just crazy Jeez. that and my cousin who's outside of atlanta uh there's like uh this this four-way stop which a lot of people don't stop and one time he said when he first moved into his house all he heard was a huge smash late at night and he went out there and the engine released from the car flew Whoa. off and the car was on fire and the guy was burning to death and he pulled him out. Holy shit. That's a crazy, Who was it that like that out? would give me nightmares, you know, like you just heard of my cousin, he ran out of his house, Holy pulled crap. the dude out of the car. His like legs were like melting, melting <laughs> off and stuff. It was, it was crazy, bro. And the end, the engine like literally flew off the car. It, the engine was on the ground. They're rolling. That's insane, dude. Because I think they were both those streets. They go fast. They're probably going give or take 75, 80 miles an hour both ways. Give or take one hundred fifty miles right. an hour head on collision. Good God. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, that's far from yeah, cool definitely. for sure. So, Jeez. No, definitely. Just hearing screaming and people like you know the smell of people burning right. like just wildness man yeah it's the same uh it's the same thing wow. though with me and my cousin like my cousin uh is like world class i wouldn't even say handyman because that's just like an insult to them like he, he can build and put together anything like i went to his house and he had tables in his in his living room in tables i thought he bought them somewhere they're like yeah you like a new table no he made them everything i was like whoa anyway but he came over and that's how we were able to build like because the ac unit there's a big shaft on the outside of the house and it pushed that into the, it pushed the AC unit into the yeah. shaft and busted all that up. So we had to scab it all back together and rebuild it also. Um, but he, I was just, I was the assistant essentially. He was the one doing all the work because he knows what he's doing. But so that, God, that dude, saved us yeah. a ton. You're like, I'll do anything physical. I can put yeah. it together, but you got to explain yeah, yeah. what I'm doing because well, you tell me where to yeah, go. Exactly, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like we, when we were rebuilding the house, man, we definitely had some uh, contractors and people helping. But YouTube's amazing, man. We were on YouTube and, like, I, you know, chopping up floors and putting oh, new yeah. boards in and, like, you know, ripping up walls and just going crazy. I was like, worst case scenario, I'll, I'll hire someone at the end if I can't fix it. But I'm going to go as far as yeah. I can on as many things I can. Other than electrical and plumbing, sure. specifically that, and electrical specifically. Because yeah. I'm not playing around, not doing things to code. And yeah. It's not worth it, you know. I'll do a little tiling here and there. I didn't do much of that because I don't love it. But, uh, you know, whatever I can do, we did, you know. Yeah, I've, I've messed with electrical stuff, like, but not anything like in somebody's house, like modifying, like, little things, you know what I mean? But, yeah, if I was trying to put in put in mm -hmm. real big electrical shit, no way. Nope. I'll leave that to the professionals.
Yeah, no. A hundred percent. And actually, I mean, there's a lot of bad ones in those. Dude, you got to get someone good, man. Because I, I was, you know, in homes and working with people. And I mean, some of the shit electricians do. I don't know how these houses don't burn down. Right. I mean, putting in circuit breakers and those things they've made are lifesavers because there are definitely some dudes out there and they're not good. The problem with electricians is, and this is what you have to watch, especially on big projects, is this guy comes out. He's a master electrician. He's great, yada, yada. And then he has these nobodies working for right. him. And they're under his umbrella and they're under his insurance, but they're apprentices, which I can apprentice for an electrician right now. I mean, the thing is, you don't necessarily need anything to be an apprentice. Right. You hopefully want to keep going to school and become an electrician. But some of these dudes don't. They just like make minimum wage or bullshit money and they're just pulling wires and connecting. It's like, yeah, I get the theory of electricity, but like if you're not good, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, nah, I'm, I'm good with all yeah, that. Yeah, right. That's just good with all seems that. Seems a bit dangerous. So, I made sure the dude that came out about the project and bid it with the one who installed it you know yeah 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 for sure let's make sure you're doing all that oh yeah yeah well brother i have not had anything to eat it's getting about to be about 8 30 here i'm ready to go get me some grub the white yeah yeah we went for a while meatloaf man. tonight nice <laughs> that's one of my favorites man oh, yeah. i love meatloaf in honor love of me meatloaf. Some meatloaf. Eat, eat some extra for me bro. in honor of meatloaf who just passed away RIP me loaf. <laughs> All right, bro. Uh, we'll definitely do this again, hopefully in, in person, for real, for yeah. real. Um, enjoy that meatloaf. Tell the family I said much love. And, yeah. and uh, I will talk to you when I'm back in the States, and we'll, we'll keep working on that project, bro. Sounds good. Much love to you. Pass love on to the lady. And uh, we'll talk soon. We'll do. Let me hit the hang-up button so I can yeah. try to save this, yeah, all right? you do it. You're? Peace, bro. All right, my brother. Much love, man. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Peace.